Uh, thanks for being here. A couple comments about uh, our Indiana game. A very emotional day for our seniors. And I uh, made a comment last week that because you stay four years at a place doesn't earn you the respect of being a senior. And, of course, there's senior days. And, and uh, then there are the real senior days. And we're fortunate this year to really experience one where the majority, if not all, of the guys that jogged out of that uh, tunnel uh, had a significant impact on our program. And, and uh, very, very good people. Uh, proud to be their coach. So they played well um, on defense. The players of the game, or the, excuse me, the great champions were Bradley Roby, playing at a very high level, uh, Bosa, and then the co-defensive players of the game where Ryan Shazier played as well as he can. I mean, he played outstanding. 54 production points, and that's, I've never, we've, we've always done production points, and and I never, you know, to have 30 is probably the most I've ever seen, and he had 54 production points. Uh, Mike Bennett is also playing at a very, very high level. He's healthy again. He started the season very strong. I uh, went through some uh, injuries and then uh, moved on, and and we can't, he's, he's getting stronger and stronger again, so he played very well. Those are our co-defensive players of the game. On offense, um, Andrew Norwell um, played excellent. Taylor Decker once again continues to improve his game. Tight end Jeff Hireman, Devin Smith and Chris Fields, running back Carlos Hyde. And co-players of the week were our quarterback, Braxton Miller, who played, it, played probably his best, uh, I don't know, played, played uh, one of his best games. Uh, he threw a third down and 17 in that, in uh, obviously the condi weather conditions with a guy bearing down on him, and that's uh, his best play at quarterback since we've been here. And, uh, that's his best, and he knows it, I know it, Tom Herm knows it. So his best play as a quarterback, I'm not saying athlete that jumps around and lands on his head and those kind of things, those are... Those are just gifted, very uh, gifted young man. But his best play as a college football quarterback was the third down and 17 on the right hash in the snowy conditions where he completed a bender to Jeff Hireman with a pressure bearing down on him. He didn't panic out of the pocket. He stepped, delivered the ball, and uh, that might be worth going back and watching it. Fantastic play. And our center, the apex, Corey Lindsley, uh, graded out a champion. He's 100% healthy and uh, playing like it. Um, our kicking game was uh, pretty solid. Oh, shoot, I don't have that sheet in front of me. Our player of the game, who was our player of the game? Von Bell. Very good, Jerry. Von Bell is our player of the game, continues to improve and, and uh, make great strides. Coverage units were good. Punt, we didn't give up anything. And then kickoff, uh, I think we gave one up near the end, out a little bit with a personal foul penalty, but the game was pretty much over. And, and, uh, but I'm pretty pleased with our, our kicking units. Um, even though we're, you know, right now we have uh, 12 guys out uh, season-ending injuries. Our Omani was out this game. Philly Brown was out this game. Um, Curtis Grant was still out. We didn't feel like he was quite ready, and we got to get him back. Uh, the positive is I think Armani's going to be fine for this week. And uh, Josh Perry played fairly well for a guy that missed a couple weeks of practice. And then uh, uh, I think Curtis Grant's going to be good to go, which we'll need him in this game. So we're overcoming some. Uh, um, injuries that uh, some young guys are stepping up. Warren Ball played much better. Ezekiel Elliott is very involved in our kicking and coverage units. And those are, in big games, especially like this one coming up, those are going to be critical, critical players in this game. So the good thing is there's some experience there. So we're overcoming. Every team's dealing with injuries. But to see that uh, some uh, young people are stepping up, that's, uh, that's, I'm glad we recruited well. And, and I like these young, you know, the young players we have. So I'll answer some questions for you. Do you have an appreciation for how much of a grudge match this is between Ohio State and Michigan before you were a GA here? Oh, yeah. Uh, no, it probably took it to – no, I didn't realize it because I was just like uh, most that – from the outside looking in, hey, it's really a great game, a 10-year war. I grew up in the 10-year war, and uh, I learned to dislike Michigan at a very young age. And uh, – uh, but no, you never really truly appreciate till you're behind the, the walls here and find out how serious it is. When you were when you were when you were Bowling Green, obviously Toledo was the biggest rival. You told what was the biggest game for you? Team down south. What? Yeah, what Provo. Well. The team out west. <laughs> or Florida State. FSU. I got Florida State. So yeah, we've. Uh, I just think that's really you know, I, I'm a huge fan of college football. I think that's what separates it from really a lot of the other. Uh, I'm a fan of pro football too, but I think one of the pageantries and the, the pageantry and rivalries are, are unique in college football. And uh, 
do we make a big deal out of this game? Absolutely. Do we make a huge deal like over the top about rivalry games? Yes, we do. And and uh, and uh, that's the way I was brought up. That's the way I, you know, we do. We we kind of go over the top here, and uh, we always have. Bill, you realize you did say Michigan. <laughs> did I really? Yes, yeah, you did. at a very young age. Michigan, at a very young age. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> Could you give a sense of just how different the mindset is here, how different the preparation is here for this week? Compared it is to different. Week? It's not just another game. It's not. And uh, uh, our players know that. That Does that mean we put less uh, value on Indiana or less value on the following week coming up? I, I didn't say that. But there's there's an extra pep in the step. We, uh, we officially started working the game a day earlier than we normally do. And um, they, they get it. And the, uh, our players get it. This, that's one thing about, you know, a new coach doesn't come in here and try to stimulate that rivalry. That rivalry has been stimulated long, long ago. We need to carry it on, and even make it stronger. So, do you? Do you? Um, uh, I just forgot what I was going to say. Um, General Bob, um, was there a moment when you were at the GA when that when you were coaching for Earl where you something happened or there was an incident where you realized? how much bigger this was maybe than you thought anything? Yeah, it was kind of funny. I, I was driving to work on a Monday morning as a 21-year-old graduate assistant, and I look up on those twin towers by the stadium, and it says Muck Fishigan and Sheets hanging out. The, and I said, that is really cool right there. And then they, they did. They switched the M and the F, and someone made them take it down. <laughs> so that was in 1986. So there's some old student now that was back then laughing her tail off when they hear that. Said, "Yeah, that was my room." I'm also also curious because that was uh, so long ago, and um, Earl obviously coached for Woody, and we were close to the 10-year war. Has this, has this lost anything over the years? I mean, because I mean, you think it's still just as intense, and whatever as it was. Oh, I do. I, absolutely, I do. Uh, I think the 10 year war, just because of the two iconic people that were running the programs and what Bo Schembechler did for that school, you know, when, when they beat them, uh, I think it was 69. Was it 69? Yeah, 69. And, and, and uh, a lot of, that was a heck of a, uh, I mean, that was a heck of a time period for both schools. Fred Rowe Wright, Austin? Remember when you referenced the Holy War in, in Florida State when you were in Florida? You go in, uh, you don't maybe have that same appreciation that you did for this rivalry. How long does it take you to adapt to that tradition and, and learn it? And then it becomes uh, as passionate for you as it is for us. Well, I was. I'm very fortunate. I mean, at, at Bowling Green, that was that was a. a I mean, you just ask, and I would uh, always have people come back. I think that's really great. You know, I'm going to uh, try to have Coach Bruce uh, speak to our team this year, and obviously, this one I don't need to be educated on very much. However, I did. I asked and. I thought Coach Trestle, obviously with his record, was phenomenal. So I did a lot of homework on some of the things that uh, him and his staff did. And then uh, when I went out to Utah, I had to be introduced to that. But I dove, dove into it and our, made our staff learn everything about it, made our staff uh, take a test to figure out about what the rivalry meant. Because I don't want the coaches to be phony. I don't want you know, some, somebody from Ohio stepping into Salt Lake City and telling you, you know, make it, make it a act like it's a big deal, but deep down you don't believe it is. That Players see right through that. So I was educated real fast, and I asked and tried to learn as much as I could. You said there's an extra day of preparation for this week. When you get into actually coaching, do you, are you acting differently? Does it feel different? Once you get it does feel different. and I, I mean, I'm not acting different, but uh, it does feel different, and uh, I see it with our staff. That's a good thing about hiring guys that live the rivalry. They know it, and coaching players that appreciate it too. Yeah, I heard a couple things. Number one, Braxton, like you just pointed out, I mean, he might have had one of his better games ever on Saturday, but especially on that one play, whatever. Do you see him playing suddenly on a different level? I mean, he, he took the brace off and was just kind of going at it. Just And what does that, I guess, portend for your offense going forward? You got Dontre Wilson coming online a little bit more and stuff. Do you see this offense getting better in the next two or three games? We have to. I mean, when you uh, see who we're playing a very well-coached defense coming up with good players, um, and uh, obviously we see what's coming down the road. But our focus is this week. So uh, I, I see us playing at a very pretty high level. You know, that was a pretty impressive performance by our guys, especially in those conditions last week. 
And uh, I see us, if you, if the term is peaking, uh, you know, I don't usually use that term, but I feel we're getting better and better each week. Braxton Miller is a um, different quarterback than he was. And people make a comment about he's having fun. And he's having fun because he knows what he's doing. He's confident in the person all around him. And that was not the case last year. And I, can, I wasn't here, but I can only imagine his freshman year when, you know, because Braxton, like any, I don't want to just say like any athlete, but Braxton is a guy that uh, if he's not comfortable, he's not, you know, he's not going to, you know, act like he's having fun when it's, it's not fun. And he, he, he knows where people are. He knows the protections. He's, uh, he's playing quarterback. And uh, he has a skill set to be a pro quarterback. There's no doubt in my mind. You know, I don't believe he's ready yet, but I, uh, he's certainly, you know, I get asked that question, can Braxton Miller play, in a quarter, uh, play NFL quarterback? Absolutely he can. No doubt in my mind because he continues to develop. And the other thing, uh, do you, what, what do you see about Michigan? Michigan clearly is going through a tough period offensively, it does appear. What do you see about them? What do you sell to your team about them this week? Uh, they're a four-loss team. Yeah, I have not watched their offense yet. Um, you know, crossover, we've, we've seen them a couple of times. We're getting ready for Penn State. We saw them. And then um, uh, last week we saw them a little bit getting ready for Indiana. Uh, but I have not studied their offense. Obviously, Coach Fickle and, and Coach Withers have, and they're in charge of it. And, and I'll go visit with them on Tuesday um, about it. But, uh, you know, I, I think uh, everyone knows, and our, I, I read someone's comment where it doesn't matter. These, in, in, in teams that care about rivalries, it doesn't matter. We'll get the we'll get their best game. Back row left, Jared. Urban, was your last trip to Ann Arbor were you in, working in television? Oh, yeah, but I mean the last one was when I was coaching was in 1987, and uh, Earl Coach Bruce's last game. What were your what are your your visions when you think of the Big House? How do you explain it to the team uh, to prepare them for what they're going into? What do you what do you tell them about the players? <clears throat> We won't uh, usually don't spend much time. It's a big stadium with a lot of people in it, and we'll do crowd noise on Wednesday. And we don't do pregame walkthroughs at places. And you know, I don't want our players. You know, we need to know where the 25 second clock is, the quarterbacks, and then uh, all that matters is the the white lines and the and the turf. So we've never really been a big team about hey, there's let's go check out the stadium, because to me, stadiums are stadiums, and and just take care of your business. Uh, we know we'll be loud. We know the fans are passionate. We know this is going to be a big game for everyone involved. So we won't spend much time talking about it at all, if any. Front row, Todd. The, the play you talked about with Braxton on the third and 17 to, to Jeff, has he made that play this year? And how big of a step is that for a quarterback, especially a quarterback who's got some athleticism to him, not to – you know, tuck it and run on something like that. Well, Josh Harris was a great quarterback. We had a Bowling Green that we had the moment where he became a quarterback, and then Alex Smith had a, a couple moments where all of a sudden you're like, there, we got one. And then uh, same with uh, Chris Leak and then Tim Tebow and then this guy. And he's had a couple moments. This is the best play he's, I think, the best play he's had as a quarterback. That was his moment where he stood right in the pocket, and that's the hardest thing you ask a quarterback to do, especially him. Uh, not not him. And that's that's artist thing you ask any quarterback to do. I mean, it was right in a. I think it's worth watching the end zone copy if you can. And he threw right over the top of someone, got hit right in the face, and delivered a strike, about a 25-yard pass, 17-yard, third and 17. And not to diminish the rivalry at all, but do you use the 69 game as a as a cautionary tale this week with with this group, or is that something that you think that? I might. That's usually later in the week. You know, I, I might. I think it's always good to talk about the history of the rivalry. I mean, our, our players know it, but I think, uh, you know, we might do that. Far left back, Matt. Um, just interested, you know, as well as things went this weekend, you were minus three internal margin, which might have something to do with the weather and everything. But in this game coming up, how important do you see that, uh, you know, going up there? What was the difference in last year's game? You know, it was uh, we were not very good up until that point. I think we missed on one or two red zone opportunities. And last year, our field goal kicker, Drew, won the game for us. You know, defense created turnovers. We got positive field position, and we couldn't score, which is you have to give them credit, but we have to be much better down there. But it was uh, that was the difference in, the, in last year's game, and I would anticipate big games. That's, you know, that and kicking game are the, the edges. Those are the, those are the things that make the difference in those kind of games. Another thing, uh, Andrew, what, Duran Grand, is he fine? Uh, I know he left the game. Yeah, he left. He, he practiced yesterday. He's fine. It was more precautionary you know, yesterday or Saturday. Front row left, Doug. Urban, 
this game has always been at the end of the regular season, and now there's a title game after it. You've dealt with that before, playing a rivalry game and then a title game in the SEC. Just, I don't know, is it, I mean, especially in Ohio State, you put everything into the Michigan game and then you could wait months till the bowl game. Anything different about it now? I think there is. You know, this will be our first one. I've, like you said, I've done it uh, one. We've done it three times, uh, I believe, and, and that's, that's, I don't want to say it's awful, but it, I mean, you talk about blowing out your staff and, you know, our players and then throwing finals week and, and those type of things that our players are dealing with right now. So this is, uh, this is a, I mean, our focus is on this one, but we know what's coming. And it, it, you have to be so disciplined in the way you practice, the way, you know, I go, you know I'm, I'm going to warn our coaches, I'm warning myself about sleep, taking care of yourself, because this next two weeks are, are going to be brutal. You mentioned Michael Bennett. You, seen, you guys played Adolphus as a tackle on on Saturday. Right. Um, Bennett was getting through double team. Just those that defensive line. How far has it come this year? What level have they playing at? I think Mike's doing an excellent job. Those are all new guys. The front seven, other than Ryan Shazier, were all new players. And right, and right now, especially after last week, I don't think we played that well against Illinois. And not to take anything away from Illinois' scheme and that quarterback, but. Uh, this past week, I thought, and I will say that I think Coach Fickle and Coach Withers, it uh, might have been their best game plan. You know, every time uh, there was, you know, it was a little bit of a chess match because they were looking over the sideline. We were changing our defenses and uh, uh, did a very good, very, very pleased with the performance of our defense Saturday. And a big part of it is that defensive line. Yeah, Coach, I want to ask about Michigan's defense. You touched on it a little bit earlier. Uh, Seems like they've improved since Ryan got back in there at linebacker. Right. He missed the first half, and then Frank Clark up front looks like a pretty disruptive guy. Uh, they've held a couple teams under 20 and lost games in the last month. Just what do you see with them? Well, you watch the film, and uh, I think you know Sunday's indication is just you watch the film before you go home at night, and you're thinking, now, how are we going to block these guys? Because I think they're very well coached. Uh, obviously, I'm very close with the D coordinator. Um, and I think he's a, a great coach, uh, and they're they're playing very hard. They got excellent players. So, whatever issues the uh, uh, the rival has, it has nothing to do with their defense. Their defense is playing a very very high level, and we have to they, we have to play our best game to move the ball against these guys. Last two questions. Back row there, left, Bill. Herman, has there been a uh, perhaps a moment with Shazier, and also have you? How many times have you had a guy make twenty tackles? Has there been? I'm sorry. Braxton moment with Shazier for kind of yeah, uh, I don't know if you can pinpoint a play. That might be a good one to ask uh, uh, Coach Fickle. But the thing that he's doing, he used to always overrun plays, if you remember back when he, because he's almost like a safety playing linebacker, and he's grown into that linebacker position. Now he's falling back on plays, and that, he made a bunch of tackles where he would, you know, his instinct is on the inside zone or zone play, which everybody runs is to go front side and that's the concept of the play is he cut back behind it and he's falling back on those plays so he did that as well as I've seen him play and really as well as I've seen a linebacker do it. Brandon Spikes used to be outstanding at that where you sit up front side and you fall back and make that tackle. So he, he's just his fundamentals of tackling are what have made him uh, the player that he is right now. 20 tackles? Have you had a guy make 20 tackles? Uh, I was part of, uh, I was here when uh, Spielman uh, had like 30 or something against the uh, rivals. Uh, I think we probably have, I, I don't know. But that's a lot of tackles. Last question, Lori. Coach, how do you balance making this week special like it is and keeping the guys in the routine that's worked for them now, 23 games? Not, not hard to do. You know, I think uh, this is special. It is different than last week. It's different than the week before. It's the rivalry game, and, and uh, we'll have senior tackle on Thursday. Our players, we have an excellent routine. I love how we do it. We practice in the morning. Uh, local players can go home for Thanksgiving. They're back the next day. Uh, I want our coaches to work the game and our players to work the game. A big part of it is the routine on, uh, on a rivalry week, and um, there, there's no issue. Our, our guys will be ready to go. Thank you. Thank you.